live to the Kenny Report. Welcome back to the Kenny Report. I'm joined now by Assistant Treasurer Michael Suka in Melbourne. Thank you for your time today. Uh, hi, Sherry. Good to be with you. Now, the unemployment figures today at 7.4%, but the real number, the effective unemployment, could be double this. Given these unemployment numbers, are you now considering extending JobKeeper? Well, Sherry, um, the Treasurer will, uh, you know, outline on uh, the 23rd of this month uh, the way forward uh, as far as the economic strategy of the government. I don't think uh, these numbers are of a particular surprise to the market or the government, quite frankly. Uh, we have seen uh, over uh, the last few months the trajectory of unemployment, obviously uh, the JobKeeper program and other policies we've put in place which have meant a lot of people haven't ended up uh, in that unemployment number. But notwithstanding that, we uh, are aware, obviously, and have been for a while, uh, that we're likely to get to this point. So um, not a, uh, a huge surprise, but very sobering numbers. Um, and there are lives and individuals and families who sit behind those and, uh, you know, in many instances uh, are really sad and in some cases tragic stories. So we're obviously very focused. Everything we do, and the Treasurer will outline this next week, but everything we do will be focused on job creation, on uh, helping businesses do what they need to do to keep employees or indeed add new employees. Uh, and as the PM uh, outlined today, to provide Australians with the skills that they need to be able to meet uh, those uh, those expected and we hope uh, opportunities in the future. Yeah, I mean you're right. You know when you hear the unemployment figure, people sometimes forget that these are uh, you know hundreds of thousands of families uh, who will now struggle to feed their children, school, and provide for their children, even keep their home. How what does your modelling show about how much worse this is going to get uh, by the end of the year, particularly when some of the benefits end? Well, again, Sherry, some of the uh, forward um, projections are obviously going to be really impacted by a range of factors, including how long lockdowns go for. I mean, obviously, this quite significant uh, lockdown that we're seeing in, here in Victoria, whilst not entirely unexpected, I think perhaps a fortnight ago was not necessarily uh, you know, in most of our minds. Come back minds. to you so, in just a moment. We're going to go now to a live press conference in Melbourne. Going back now to Assistant Treasurer Michael Sucker. Uh, sorry for the interruption. I was asking you what your modelling shows about just how much worse the unemployment rate is going to get towards the end of this year. Do we have any indication? Are you expecting at the official unemployment rate to go beyond 10%? Well, Sherry, as I said, um, the Treasurer will outline a range of these things uh, in response uh, to the unfolding uh, pandemic uh, and will do so in more specifics next week. So I'm not going to foreshadow any of that, although I would note, as I was saying just before we, we went away, uh, that obviously there are still a range of factors that mean those sorts of projections are notoriously difficult. But again, uh, today's announcement from uh, the Prime Minister as part of the job maker plan uh, today, job trainer, $2 billion being committed to improve uh, skills, um, $1.5 billion to uh, extend the uh, trainee and apprentice wage subsidy, which uh, is um, you know, massive for those tens of thousands of apprentices and trainees who will remain employed because of the 50% wage subsidy, this now being extended to larger businesses, businesses that employ up to 200 people, and another $500 million that will be matched by states and territories to provide uh, over 300,000 additional places for vocational education and training in areas where there have been demonstrated skills okay. needs. So M Minister, uh, Labor all, has today, all... after the Prime Minister's announcement, Labor uh, has attacked the government for having no plan to create jobs, saying this will be a jobless recovery. What is the government's plan to create jobs after the pandemic? Well, I mean, all I'd say in response to Labor is that their only prescription for any problem is higher taxes. That certainly doesn't create jobs. Everything we have done, uh, obviously in the early stages of the pandemic, assisting families, households and businesses to remain afloat in very difficult times was the focus. And now coming out, everything we're doing is focusing on 
encouraging investment, encouraging people to take those risks, whether it's in business uh, or entrepreneurs, but other, other businesses just to remain afloat. And whether it's the Home Builder program, which we've seen has increased new home starts by 77%, that's tradies on site, that's manufacturers uh, who feed into the construction supply chain continuing to work now with job trainer, making sure we've got the skills that are there for the opportunities that are going to come. And of course, we'll have more to say uh, next week and in the lead up to the budget. But if you look at our record, a few governments in our history have had a record of creating jobs as much as we have, and we will continue that. And everything we do will be focused on uh, ensuring that we have the right settings to do it. The Treasurer um, had a call uh, a finance minister's meeting call with the US, uh, the UK, Canada, um, to work cooperatively with them on how we can work together to ensure that all of our economies are pushing in the same direction because so many of them are large trading partners of ours. So I can assure you everything we're doing is focused on that and we've got the track record to do it. OK, Obviously, the Minister, Labor Party unfortunately, is quite irrelevant to unfortunately we've, we're out of time. I did want to get to another few things today, but uh, we've run out of time because of the press conference with the shooting in Melbourne. Thank you very much, Michael Sugar, for joining me. Thanks, Sherry.